how the police departments got started in America was through the slave patrols. Now, they have a segment of your caucasoids that get upset when we discuss this, but you know what? It's your problem that you have such a negative history. You do not have a good history. There, there's nothing the Black community can do about that. So when we talk about it, don't get upset. You know, it was your ancestors that did these things. Why are you upset with us for talking about it? Uh, you know, history is good until it just don't look good and or reflect well on you. That's your problem. All right, CJ, thank you for sending this article. In hundreds of police departments across the country, the percentage of whites on the force is more than 30 percent points higher than the communities they serve in. According to an analysis of a government survey of police departments, minorities make up a quarter of police forces, according to the 2007 survey. The most recent comprehensive data available, experts say that diversity in the police force increases a department's credibility with its community. Even if police officers of whatever race enforce the law in relatively the same way. There's a huge image problem with a department that is so out of sync with the racial composition of the local population, said Donald Witzer, a sociologist at George Washington University. Listed below are local police departments from 17 metropolitan areas sorted so that departments with the largest percentage points differences of white officers to white residents are at the top. You know, the police forces of, the, of today still resemble the slave patrols of yesterday. And that is the problem. They want to continue to be the slave patrols in the black neighborhood. And that's presenting a huge problem. I do not agree. And even when I was a child, I could have told you I did not agree with a whole bunch of white cops in a black neighborhood. Number one, you lack the humanity to understand the black population, period. You lack the humanity on how to handle the black population. And you lack the humanity on how to communicate with black people. And we see that with your trolling online. You have no intentions on trying to get along with the black community. We see it in what you write on black channels and we see how you verbalize it in public. And that's fine. You don't have to get along with us. Nobody's pointing a gun at you and telling you you have to. But if you have those feelings, why do you keep coming around? You know, because, see, they're conditioned to believe that they got to keep talking negative to us to keep low self-esteem among black people. Well, I can tell you one thing. It sure ain't working on me. <laughs> you wasting it's a wasted effort because what you fail to understand is all black people don't have low self-esteem some absolutely all don't waste your time seriously when you see the battle is lost <laughs> move on baltimore baltimore police department has a lower percentage of blacks than the population it serves but in contrast to other cities that have been wrecked by tensions and protest over police confrontation with black men, the city's mayor, its police commissioner, the state's attorney are all black, giving somewhat different tender to clashes between the power structure and its critics. But see, that doesn't make a difference. OK, because you can best believe as long as your foot soldiers are predominantly white on the street, it really doesn't matter if you have black people at the top, because, see, this still is a white supremacist society. Now, if it did make a difference, how come there's still white cops 
shooting down black people in Baltimore. That's your proof right there. And they're still getting away with it. Okay, so if having all of these black people at the top cut down on police brutality on the streets, then we should have seen the difference by now. It makes no difference because, see, many of these white cops are hell-bent on mistreating, subjugating, oppressing, and killing the black public. When you got that mindset out there, it's not going to make a difference of who's at the top. None at all. So now you have um, residents of Baltimore. It says uh, 20 plus police precincts with more whites than residents. So you see right here the bar for residents, 28% white, but the police force is 48% white. Okay, a big, huge chunk of them in the black neighborhood and it shouldn't be like that but we live in the land of the devils and we know it will never change this is how they feel like they have to stay in control of us you know and they're not doing no police work anyway look at what they do they randomly stop people, start an altercation, and then next thing you know, the black person is either dead or going to jail. You could be walking on your two feet. Here they come confronting you. And, and you can tell they don't have a reason at that very moment because what do they do? They all do the same thing, resisting arrests, resisting arrests. Well, if you had a reason for that arrest, what is it? They can't tell you because they didn't come up with one yet. See, they got to go see what kind of rap sheet you got and then fabricate some reason why they stopped you in the first place. And the new thing they're doing is you look like a suspect. You look like a suspect. Okay, so the whole black community look like a subject, a suspect. But I guess in a way that's true. You did write the slave codes of black laws and pig laws, which <laughs> make it illegal for anybody to be black in America. So I guess in a sense, you're right. So now let's go down to Charleston. Now, Charleston is very black. There is no reason for a police force to outnumber the black citizens when South Carolina is one of the blackest states in America. So it absolutely makes no sense. Charleston, African Americans make up nearly half of the residents in North Charleston, but less than 20% of its police department. About 80% of the department's officers are white. That makes absolutely no sense. 80% white? It makes no sense, but see, you are, that's what makes you the slave patrol even of today. The racial makeup of the Charleston Police Department more closely resembles the community it serves. Okay, so this is North Charleston, and I can tell you for a fact, North Charleston is very black. Only 38% white, and look at the, the residents, 47% black, 11% Hispanic, and then you have 2% um, Asian, and then 2% other. Okay, it's very black in Charleston. 80% of the cops in North Charleston are white. That makes absolutely no sense. Okay, 18% black. That makes no sense. Again, they only want to be in there, number one, to spy on you, see what you're doing, see if the black people are planning some kind of uprising or we're planning some type of uh, protest against them or we gonna plot to do something against them. That's the only reason why they're around us like that, ladies and gentlemen. It's not for any other reason. These people are paranoid and they got to know what you're doing at every moment of the day. That's what it is. They know they've done the black population wrong. They want to know when you're going to get mad enough 
to do something about it. That's why they want to be around you like this. That's why they got these black communities all flooded out with cops. There's a reason for it. And it goes right back to the same reason it was during slavery. They feared an uprising. So they wanted to flood the community with themselves when it comes down to slave patrolling. All right, so now let's look at South Carolina, Charleston, I'm sorry, Charleston, 69% white, 25% black. And the police officers, 74% black, only 21% white, uh, black. I'm sorry, 74% white and only 21% black. Okay. Now, you, only 2% Hispanic. See, Hispanics are not big, by the way, in every state in the union. They are only big in certain states, but not all of them. You know, just like on a global scale, Hispanics are not big globally. They're only big in certain parts of the world. But when you start getting like out in the Middle East and Africa and Asia, they're not big in those places at all, where it's the opposite for Blacks. Blacks are big in all of those places. Um, all right, so you can see a big disproportion right there in police officers compared to the black population. All right, now we have St. Louis, the city of Dred Scott, disparities in racial makeup of police departments and their communities are most pronounced in smaller Midwest cities like Ferguson, where minorities make up at least two thirds of the population. Ferguson went from majority white to majority black in the last two decades, but the police department is still predominantly white. The imbalance is less, less pronounced uh, in other parts of St. Louis County where the population is mostly white. All right, and you can see, I, I'm not going to go through each one, but you can see where, how it disproportionate the police departments are. So Delwood is 18% white, 79% black, and the police department is 94% white. That is outrageous. Only 6% black but it's 79% black. How is it 94% white? See, again, they want to be around the black community to number one, mistreat you, to always try to keep you in fear and to kill you. And they also want to know when are you going to get mad enough to fight back? That's the only reason why they come around you. They're curious to what you think and how you feel. And that's why they come to black channels too. They want to know what the black person is thinking and what they are feeling. And they can't do that unless they have their presence around you. And you notice how much they hate black people, but look at how much they won't stay away from you. Just look at, look at the reflection of this 70% black. 91% white. You know, they, they hate you with a passion, but they won't keep their asses away from you. Look at Ferguson, 67% black. Police force is 83% white. And only, look look at the number of black, 11% around a community that's 67% black. That doesn't even make any sense. Again, how do you subjugate a community? You keep your police force as white as possible. So now you got uh, Hazelwood, 30% black, 99% white community. All right, and you can see this all down the line. Um, Moline Acres, 92% of the residents are black. Okay, this is the only one that looks like it, it somewhat works. 58% of the police are black. 42% white. I still think that's way too high, especially when only 6% of the residents are white. That's my opinion. 
you can tell me what you think in the comment section. All right, and this is a 68% Bellevue and the police 94%, which I think is still too high. 25% of the residents are black and only 6% of the police force is black. So the police force still disproportionately white. Now look at this, Page Dell. Page Dell, 3% of the residents are white, okay? And the police force 25% black, I mean, sorry, white <clears throat> in this case. With 3% of the population, you really shouldn't even have 25% white cops, but they do. 75% uh, of the cops are black, 93% of the residents are black. So, I mean, that's a little better than some of the other counties. St. Louis, 42% white, 49% black. So there's actually more black people in St. Louis than white. So the police force is 63% white, 63% white, which I think still is too high, 35% black. Florissant um, is 68% white, the community is, okay? In this particular case, 88% uh, of the police to fo uh, force in this town is white. Okay, only 11% black, 27% of the residents are black. So it shows you the point by how disproportionate the police departments really are. And it is too much. Okay, you see the same pattern here in Cleveland, like Ferguson, Missouri, Maple Heights, went from being mostly white to nearly two thirds black in the past few decades, but its police force remains unchanged despite a 1977 affirmative action deal in which the city agreed to hire more minorities. Most of the other police departments in the Cleveland metro area are closely matched to populations they serve, okay? And still, you know, they may say that, but still, if you look, it, <laughs> Madison, 99% white cops, Maplefield, 94%. So these are predominantly white areas. 97%, um, 97% of the cops are white. Um, Parma, 99% of the cops are white. Berea, 99% white. But see, I can get that. The residents are mostly white. I get that. But when you start having breakdowns like this, like this next one, University Height, 23% of the residents there are black. But you have a police force with only 3% black. I don't think that's right. I'm sorry. So 97% of the cops are white, okay? And you got 98% in Garfield Heights, Ohio, white cops, but you have a residence of 35% um, black. So why are only 2% of the cops black? That makes no sense. And Maple Heights, you have 97% of the cops are white, only 3% black, but look at the residents, 68% of the residents are black. So they make up just about the entire town and only 28% white. So what sense does it make to have 97% of white officers? No. You know, it, it's one thing if you got along with the black population and, and you were in there, but you don't. And you make it very clear that you don't get along with them. Um, New York Police Department is among a number of large police departments where court order mandates have led to more racial diversity. But I want you to keep something in mind. The police unions are very 
segregated in New York. They have a black police union and a white police union. You know why? Because those white cops will not back up a black cop. And that's a fact. That's why they got the black police unions because the black cops were being mistreated. And the white unions would not do anything to help them. That's why there is a black police union. A federal judge ruled in 1978 that the city could not use its civil service exam to select new police recruits, leading to measures that increase the hiring of black and Hispanic officers. In some New Jersey towns like Plainsboro, Dover, and Madison, Hispanics and Asians are significantly underrepresented. And I used to actually work in Plainsboro years ago. Um, it's a very nice area, and there's a lot of multimillionaires that live up in that area. So it, it's got a very affluent area. A lot of big businesses like Merrill Lynch and Bristol Myers Squibb are all up in that area. Um, all right, so you can see right here Plainsboro, 37% white. 8% Black, 6% Hispanic, and it has a huge Asian population, okay, 46% Asian. And you have the police department, which is disproportionately white, and just a tiny percent, 94% white, 3% Black, and 3% Asian, which makes no sense because the vast majority of the population is Asian. But again, this is how the power structure is set up in the United States where whites flood out everybody else. Edison, right, 40% white. It's really not that many black people up in Edison. I, I've been up to Edison quite a few times, very few whites, large Asian population. A lot of East Indians and Asians live up in Edison. So it's 96% white. And you figure with all the Asians up there would be more Asian cops. Only 1% of the cops are Asian. Makes no sense. 1%... Um, you know, 1% for everybody else. All right, and then you have uh, North Bergen, which is primarily Hispanic. So these are some of the New Jersey towns that I'm familiar with. 22% white, 68% Hispanic, and then Asians, and then uh, uh, probably not even 1% of the population is black. But you can still see a disproportionate amount of cops there. The green bar are white. Okay, it should be mostly Hispanics since the, you know, majority of the town is Hispanic. Now look at Dover, 22% of the residents are white, but 78% of the cops are white. And, but you got a bigger Hispanic population, 69%. So why are there 78% white cops there? You know, it makes no sense. Gutenberg. 23% white, and a lot of Hispanics live here. All right, so, but you got 78% white cops, and 65% of the residents are Hispanic. All right, these are more north of me, these towns. I, I'm very familiar with all of them, but they're more north from where I live in New Jersey. 39% of Bellevue cops or uh, residents are white. And then you can see, you know, the white and Hispanic population are equal, but 93% of the cops are white. Again, very disproportionate. Harrison, 35% white, 44% Hispanic, but 86% of the cops are white. You know, you can see the disparities everywhere. Um, Ridgefield, 46% white, but the cops are 97%. And you, you have a pretty sizable Hispanic population, and there's no Hispanic cops at all. 3% black. 5% of the residents are black. 
um, New Bruns, North Brunswick, I'm sorry, 39% um, white, and then you have a uh, 16% black population, 18% Hispanic, and 24% Asian. 89% of the cops are white. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. But, you know, as you can see, it's disproportionate. Now, Los Angeles, you can really see the disparities. You can see it. Cities in Los Angeles County with large Hispanic populations um, like West Cavona and Pomona have mostly white police departments in parts of Orange County and Buna Park, Truston, and Garden Grove. Growing Asian and Hispanic communities are also policed by mostly white departments. And you can just look down here. You know, you have a 70% Hispanic area and 83% of the cops overall are white. Makes no sense. West Cavona, only 15% of the residents are white. 69% of the cops are white. Makes no sense. That is so, you, you can see it all through here. All of the bars are shown, green bars are showing white cops. And you can see areas are completely dominated by Hispanics. It makes no sense. You know, they don't want to change this, ladies and gentlemen. It's been too many centuries and too many opportunities for them to change these police forces so that they reflect the community and it has not happened. And Chicago is a complete mess. It is a complete mess. Um, you see in Chicago, you still have a disproportionate of Hispanic and black communities. And you see the disparities all throughout Chicago of a disproportionately large white police force. And when you get down to um, Merrillville, 44% of the residents are black, 92% of the cops are white. Glenwood, 66% of the residents are black, 74% of the cops are white. Makes no sense, I'm sorry. And it looked like the blacks and Hispanics make up a, a huge part of Boiling Brook. Yeah, and 87% white. And I don't believe all those shootings are by gangs, you know, and I really believe they're lying about the gangs. And it's just the way they report it. You know, every gang in the, every, every gang in this country got a name. Every single one got a name. But every time when there's a shooting, they always go to that generic gang related. What, what the hell does gang related mean? What the hell does that mean? Okay, either you know who the gang is or not. And you notice they never go back to report on those stories to give you an update on who shot the people. They just casually move on to the next. That's why I don't believe it's gangs doing this at all. I really don't. But gang related, that doesn't mean anything, it means nothing. If you don't have the name of the gang, what you're saying means absolutely nothing. You know why they're not fingering a gang? Because it's not a gang that did it. I can tell you that right now. That's why they're never going to come back on the air and say, this was the Crips, this was the Bloods, this was this gang, it was that gang. They're not going to do it because there was no gang involved. Okay, just, just pay attention to how they always generically report the shootings and then they follow it up with gang related, but they never come back and tell you who the gang is. And every gang in America got a name. Every last one of them got a street name. None of them are walking around calling themselves gang related. That's why it doesn't mean anything to me when they say that. Just give that some thought and don't repeat those words when you hear it. If, if cockazoids want to run around and say gang related, let them say it. The rest of us, we know the deal. Every gang in this country got a name. Nobody is called gang related. Miramar. And as you could see in Miami, Miami has a lot of black people down there. 
um, and, you know, and of course, a lot of Hispanics as well. And as you can see, you know, the white communities in Florida are smaller, in, especially in certain areas. Um, Miramar, 43% Black, 37% Hispanic. But you have a disproportionate 59% white cops and only 16% of the cops are Black. But look at the Black population. Why? Why is 43% of the population Black, but only 16% of the cops are Black? makes no sense. Again, you see smaller white populations, but no matter where the small white populations are, the police departments still are way too big for the size of white people that are there. 26% in Miami Springs, but a very large Hispanic population. But look at the police department right here. Look how long this bar is. 68% Again, this is them trying to oversee a community, 75% white, but only 37% of the population is white, 31 black, okay? Makes no sense for a police department to be that white when the residents is probably more people of color, which it is, than there are white residents. Margate. 46% uh, white, the police department is 83% white. You can see the disparities everywhere. That's too many white cops in ratio to the residents. You know, how do you keep yourself at the top subjugating everybody else of color? you disproportionately flood out certain things like your legal system, starting with the cops. You can see, oh, well, Boston, I'm not shocked about. Boston has always had a bad reputation when it comes down to policing. Boston, Chelsea's police department remains mostly white, even though more than half its population is Hispanic. Progress has been made, though, according to Chief Brian Keyes, um, Kias, um, who said the minorities now make up 30% of the force. Um, the department was continuing to reach out to more Hispanics, but still, the, you know, the disparities have always been there. 25% white residents uh, and you have 78% white cops. And you look, 62% of the residents are Hispanic. So why are there so few Hispanics on the police force? And please don't come back with that qualification stuff. You don't have to be that smart to be a cop. We see that already. All right, so you can see the disparities. And you have Brockton, which is 30% Black, but only 11% of the cops are Black. 82% White. Okay, you know what this is also showing you how it's really not that many white people like it used to be when you look at many of these charts. You know, they're only in like certain, pop, you know, populated areas, but overall, there's still more blacks and Hispanics and Asians everywhere. That's what it's also showing you. So you can see Waltham 68% white and 93% of the cops are white. And Houston, wow. Houston looks just as bad as the rest of the country. South Houston, about tw uh, 12 miles uh, southeast of Houston, is nearly 90% Hispanic. But its police forces is nearly three thirds white. That makes no sense. Houston's police department with a 26 point difference is closer to matching the demographics of its population. And as you can see, South Houston is, wow. I mean, there's hardly no white people here. 10% white, 88% Hispanic, but you got a 72% white police force? and only 13% are Hispanic. Ladies and gentlemen, they're doing this stuff on purpose. I'm just telling you, 
This is how, and this is how they're keeping the, the white cops employed. So, uh, pa um, Pasadena, 33% white, 62% Hispanic, but 85% of the cops are white. Makes no sense. Humble. 33% white, right here, 21% black, and I believe it said 31% Hispanic. But why is your cop, 41%, I'm sorry. Now, why is over 90% of the cops white? That, that doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, 83%. But that's still too high, especially when you only got 33% white. That's still way too high. Um, there's Baytown, 82% cops. Laporte um, has 62% white. 91% of the cops are white, and only 62% um, of the residents are white. Houston. 26% white, 23% black. So the white population really is not that much bigger than the black. 44% Hispanic, 6% Asian, and 1% other, but 52% of the police are white, which in my opinion is too many, especially when you look at the ratio of how Houston looks. Deer Park and Nassau Bay, Nassau Bay and Bel Air. Yeah, I mean. All right, and then you have San Francisco, but I just want you to see in the green bar shows you how many white cops compared to everyone else in the town. And as you can see, it's disproportionate. It's very disproportionate. This is San Francisco. And we have the Washington, um, D.C. You can again see a pretty nice chunk of the residents in Riverdale are black, but on the police force, they're only 12%, 96% white. The Beltway, 47% black, but the cops are 79% white. You know, th this doesn't make any sense. Manassas, 48% of Manassas residents are white. 84% of the cops are white. All right, so you can see this everywhere. And this is Phoenix. You know, like I said, there are certain areas in the country where it's a high number of Hispanics. And you can see that. And here it is, Dallas, but you know, this green bar still stays very large, don't it? And Atlanta, this is where it really don't make sense because it's mostly black down there where, look, 55% of Douglasville is black, but the cops are 91% white. You're gonna see a lot more black residents in Georgia. Georgia is a very black state. Um, 49% of the residents are black, but 91% of the police force is white. It makes no sense. All right, again, even this, 43% uh, of the residents in Marietta are white, but the police force is 94% white. But you got a, a Hispanic population of 21%, 31% for black. Why are there a police force 94% white? Covington, another one that's 47% uh, black residents, but 80% of the cops are white. Makes no sense. Very disproportionate. Fayetteville, 33% black, 86% white cops. Now, East Point, I'm familiar with some of these places. I have relatives there. East Point, 74% black in East Point. 42% of the cops are white, but look, only 12% of the residents are white. So why would you need 42% white cops? 
it, this is this looks somewhat balanced, but to me, in ratio of how many white residents there, it's still too many white cops. Um, Rosewell, Roswell, as they say, Roswell, um, 66% white, 86% of the cops are black. Now look at Atlanta, 53% of the residents in Atlanta are black. Now I got a lot of relatives in Atlanta, a lot. 36% white. 40% of the cops are white, 56% of the cops are black. That's somewhat proportionate, you know, in Hispanics, 5%. There's really not that many Hispanics down there in um, Atlanta. And then we have Seattle, and <laughs> you can clearly see the cops are predominantly white. So I'm not going to really go through all of those and same thing with Denver. So you can see this is all over the country. All over. And this is why many people still refer to you as the slave patrol. And it, after looking at all these numbers, rightfully so. Rightfully so. But it's been too many centuries, ladies and gentlemen. If they really wanted to make these changes, they would have done a better job at making them up until now. This should clearly show you they have no intentions of becoming the white population, have no intentions of making these departments that much diverse. <laughs> they are going to keep it as white as possible, even if it shows a lot of Hispanics and Blacks in certain areas. The racial gap is still there, and it will always be there. You know, they want to keep subjugating and being parasites off of the darker population. You know, how do you keep people enslaved? You keep as many white cops on the street and disproportionately grabbing as many people of color as possible to put them back into prison, also known as slavery in America, just by another name. That's all. It's slavery. And I've already showed you that in my other videos. And just like they came up with stupid things to get you in there in the past, they come up with stupid ways of getting you in there now. All you can see is resisting arrests, resisting arrest. That's the thing they, they are heavily on today is resisting arrests. They never grab the suspect and say, this person just robbed that store over there, or he just snatched this woman's purse, or he just robbed a store around the corner. They never say that. The only thing that comes out of their mouth is resisting arrests. And I want you to go back to the slave codes and the black codes and look at how they spoke about slaves resisting even back then. And you'll understand why they keep saying that today. All of that resisting, if you resist your master, if you did that, they had the right to kill you and all that stuff. That's all written in the slave codes. So whenever you get a chance, please Google the slave codes and start reading through it. All of the stuff that they say to you today, uh, you can trace it all the way back to the slave codes, the black codes, and the pig laws. So when they say resisting arrest and they don't tell you why they've stopped you, that all goes back to that. Just look. Please leave your comment and subscribe. And if you can donate to my channel, ladies and gentlemen, please do. Peace, family.